Hello and welcome to the Crazy Whacked Out Show where I interview past and present personalities of pop culture and discuss the trials and tribulations of it. And here with me today is none other than key Futurama writer and the current head writer of the new Beavis and Mind series for Paramount Plus. Please welcome Lou Martin. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Let's get started on the questions. You got your start working on Futurama. How was working on that, and what did you take from it? Uh, it was a lot of fun working on Futurama. Um, uh, it was a it was a great group of writers who uh, had a ludicrous amount of uh, advanced degrees. You can tell and, in the writing. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I I, I was the dumb guy there. The, like we we had uh, an outrageous number of uh, masters and doctorates uh, degrees in the room. You felt like a fry, didn't you? Yes, I was definitely a fry. <laughs> yeah. uh, Billy West has a knack for playing dumb characters, as you know. He also plays Stimpy. Yes. Uh, it takes a smart actor to play a dumb character. Oh, yeah. He seems really, uh, he, he seems really intelligent in real life. Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, that's also getting another reboot. Yes, they're, they're in the middle of it. They've been working on it for, like, over a year at this point. I, I don't know anything about the reboot, I'm afraid. It, I'm hoping at some point I'll have a chance to come back and write an episode. It seems like it seems like right now your your career is in a high with uh, you working on one reboot and the other show that you previously worked on getting a reboot. And what's interesting to me is that both Beast and Butthead and Peter Armour, their first reboots were the first reboots where I really felt like well they got the original down to a T and now they're both coming back again. How funny the universe works like that. Yeah. You were you were hired as Mike Judge's right hand man to assist the direction of the second Beast and Butthead reboot series and movie sequel. Doing the Universe initially takes place in 1998. Beavis and Butthead already had a revival in 2011, which appears to be not here in favor of being a direct continuation of the 90s series. How did that decision come about, and would the 2011, be, 2011 series be counted as many of one, uh, one of the multiverses since, since it seems to be um, ignored here? That's interesting. Well, the thing about Beavis and Butthead is we're not strong on like continuity like we don't like as far as like what what like our, uh, you know what really happened and which is canon and what what uh what is it and, and our basic feeling is none of it's real it's a cartoon so we play very fast and loose with con continuity um so basically like the, in the movie if you've seen it the the idea is they, 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 they're in the 90s and they fall into a black hole which transports them like through a wormhole to uh, Earth of today. And that's how we sort of deal with that they move forward in time, that, that they're still 15 years old and we're doing this series. And uh, then we go to the series and we never mention this ever again, but we do mention their parents a lot. And it's basically, in this, in the, we're, basically we, 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 when we got to start, like, finish the movie, we started writing the series, we were thinking like, having to serve this time travel conceit seemed really boring and not fun. So we just, we just didn't bother. Um, as far as how the continuity actually works, um, it, uh, I don't know. If you figure it out, let us know. But we reserve the right to, to screw up even that. <laughs> then again, they then again in some episodes, Beast might had died, and in the next episode, they're they're back together again, as if nothing's happened. Yeah, this replace the in this reboot, we we kill them at the end of episodes quite a bit. That also happened in the original since. Beavis, since in the Halloween special, for example, Beavis basically got killed by the crazy farmer guy, and then the next episode he's oh, yeah. back to normal. 
Yeah, they do. They do die. Yeah. A fair amount. They're not concerned with their own safety. We had a problem when we were writing the first season that like we had like twelve episodes that ended with them in the hospital. And even like we had to just sort of cut a bunch of those scenes and rewrite a bunch of endings. And even now, like a lot of them end in the hospital. And we're, we've we've drawn that hospital room quite a few times. But uh, the hospital is a reliable friend to fall back on. Yeah, yeah. It's a place where you it, it, it makes sense where they would end up. Exactly. In the movie. It is funny though because in the 2011 reboot, it means my I think they've traveled back to uh, travel back to the 1800s, and yet in the movie they actually do time travel. And in the, in the second right. reboot, and in the second reboot they have another time travel episode, and yet they time travel actually did time travel in the movie. Yeah, they time travel so much in Futurama, and I wrote a bunch of time travel stuff in Futurama, and like. Uh... It was fun to go, go back and write more time travel. It really, yeah. it really seeps through in the, the new series if you think about it. In the movie, Beavis and Butthead are shown to have more emotional neurosis than in the original series in 2011 reboot, with Beavis even crying on her, ironically, you're crying, <laughs> if you remember that episode. Whose idea was it to push this dimension out to the characters, and was it challenging in any way since they've never really shown that kind of emotion before? Well, I think the reason we had more, given more emotional range in the, in the, in the movie is just the fact that it's a movie. And like, uh, as a, you know, because it, because it's a movie, you need a bigger story, and you you know for a big for then you need for like a five minute uh, animated bit, and because you need a bigger story, you need the characters to actually have emotions and drive and care about things, or else or else the movie sort of you know movie story can't really work if no one cares about anything, and it's it's a challenging you know it's a challenging thing for those to write those characters to have them care about something enough drive them through an entire movie so like because they're they're so dumb they don't really understand anything so that 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 was that's basically how we ended up giving them more give this basically more emotion in the movie is, is just trying it, to have a movie sized story you have to have the characters have more of an emotional journey it was a nice. It was a nice and surprise. It's just being kind of funny that Beavis feeling big emotions over things he doesn't quite understand. Whereas, uh, whereas in the 2011 reboot, uh, uh, he accidentally swallows. He accidentally sniffs an onion, which brings tears to his eyes, and my head accuses him of crying. And in this movie, he actually does cry. How funny is that? Yeah. Yeah. Now. Uh, now. Uh, 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 Heading into the, what were you going to say? Heading into the series, the multiverse was established in the movie. Before the reboot was hatched, Mike Judge had thrown around that he'd like to age out the boys for years and had, has, has had a similar desire for King of the Hill. What was it like to write for middle-aged Beavis and Butthead, and were there any obstacles you and the other writers had to overcome writing them at a different age? It's really fun writing them old. It gives them, like, they're not that different. They're mostly just lazy, uh, mostly just lazier. Uh, it just gives us a, a wider range of stories to tell. Like, we have them go to jury duty, and they can, they can totally be smoking and drinking all the time. And uh, it's, it's also kind of fun just to, sh- it sort of just shows that their lives are very sad, just so they end up exactly where you think they would end up. <laughs> uh, before the reboot. Sort of pathos to those episodes that, that uh, Beavis and Butthead, regular Beavis and Butthead don't have, because you, you still have hope for them, that somehow they'll turn it around. 
exactly since uh, since regular Beast of Fathead haven't not aged at all, whereas uh, whereas that is a multiverse. It would be interesting if they actually if uh, beyond the movie that the two be the two Beast of Fat heads actually meet. Oh yeah, I guess the thing uh, other than the movie, we kind of have no interest in the science fiction of it. Um, we just want to do it. Just you can do a fun story with Beavis and Butthead being old. You can do a fun story with Beavis and Butthead being young. So it's like, why not do both? And there was a point like when we were just beginning to develop this, we talked pretty seriously about making them old the whole time and just having this. This is the series where they're old, and that would be the point of the reboot. And it just seemed like like a little bit too heartbreaking to leave young Beavis and Butthead put behind. There was a but now like we, we did like three old Beavis and Butthead stories out of twenty four for the first season and then with like five or six in the second season which hasn't aired yet. And it's like I really wish we had done more. It's really fun to do them all. There is uh, there was there was actually a rumor starting around uh, before the reboot actually started production that they were going to be parents in the re parents in the reboot, and uh, my dad wasn't happy about that. Oh, uh, about the rumor? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, they're never going to be parents. What? what they, like, they can't care about other human beings. That's impossible. Like, what they, like we never even we never show their parents. The idea that we would then show them as parents, uh, you know, that was, uh, we were going to do that. One one thing about Beavis and Head is like, there's almost no other. Exactly. That that basically. Like, there's, no, like, there's no room. It's like the entire episode. Yeah, yeah, everything is through the entire series. It's, it's entirely through their point of view. Um, entirely. Uh, and, and 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 just entirely about them. And it's the kind of thing where like we've found we can't even do a close up of a character who's not Beavis and Butthead because it just seems weird. There was actually something that was on my mind, but, uh, well, uh, in the movie, it, there was there was implications that Beavis might actually be his last name. Was that a joke? No, Beavis is his last name. The Beavis is definitely his last name. What's his first name? Um, was it? Yeah, is it's it it's never it's revealed? Oh, uh, unestablished. Oh, yeah. There, there is no real answer. If it's not, we haven't established it. It's just no one's thought of it. I, like, uh, I think I, I never will ever tell you what, I, what the character's real names are. I basically... Like, there is no real name that we have and we just haven't told you. It's just no one's thought of it. I, I basically theorized that, that his name was Beavis Beavis. Oh, that, yeah, that for all intents and purposes. Um, um, yeah, that's one thing, like, like I, I feel like people think that, like, when there's stuff that hasn't been on screen in a show yet, that, like, the answer, like, whatever, you know, what is, what is, what does Buffett look like? It's sort of, you know, what is there, you know, like, that there's an answer, and we just haven't told you yet, but there's absolutely no answer. We saw that that's in the first movie. There's not, if you haven't seen it on screen, the odds are we haven't given it any thought, and so, you know, you know we'll, when we, if we ever decide to. see their parents is um, he's inspired he was inspired like in the 90s uh, is, is he was inspired by uh, um, the Peanuts series oh yeah Peanuts, why, why you don't really you never, see the parents and, and the Peanuts cartoon strip where you never see the parents yeah. and the idea is it's just like you're seeing the world kind of from the kids point of view where the parents don't really count and the part of your the part of your world that where you're interacting with parents and the part of the world where you're interacting with other people who aren't your parents are totally different and totally separate and we're only seeing the world where they're interacting with each other and at their school and then going out and out and about um so it, it's, it's just it's just like what the point of view is so they like they have parents Uh, yeah, it's a. We, we, spoke, we spoke a lot about Beavis's parents. We 
never talk about butthead parents. And I think, like, I, I, to me, the reason is that, like, if you, it's, if you talk about butthead parents, he would hit you, so you don't do it. That's so, people, like, butthead's never going to talk about his parents, because, like, I'm sure it's not a great situation at home, and Beavis is never going to talk about his parents, because if you talk, if you made fun of them, or even mentioned them at all, Butthead would kick the crap out of you. Uh, so, like, like that. That's why you never do that. that. That's why you never hear about. I thought they just lived with each other. They don't. They don't. It's like, it's Beavis's house. In the, orig- um, in the original. In the original. Beavis's house. I, in the original. Well, it goes over to hang out at Beavis's house. I, in the original, it was established the other way, the other way round, but I that's guess it's... Like, Mike, I, 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 I think I saw you tweet that or something, that it had been established at Butthead's house, where, because Be- but Mike swears that it's, it's Beavis's house and always was. Oh yeah, it must have been a rumor that got out of hand. And like, this is one thing where I, I guess I was totally wrong before I was saying, like, there's, there isn't things that, you, that are in our head, but That's very right. Everything I said two minutes ago. But where, so where, where, where in the series does it establish its budget? I, I, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really positive on that one. I think, uh, I think it's probably just a floating rumor. I haven't seen every single episode. I've, I've seen a lot of them, but it. Yeah, there's a thousand. Yeah, there's so many. Some of them are red to fine. Like the very early ones. Uh-huh. Daria made a quick cameo in the movie as one of the court attendees. Was this set during her spin-off show, and will she make a cameo in the new series? The spin-off show, I don't know. If, like Mike was not involved with the spin-off show, and the spin-off show kind of, um, uh, we don't. Really want to get into, and I think there's some sense that there will be a spin-off show of Daria that is in development. I don't know if it's ever going to come out. But well, like, uh, there wasn't. Of minor, it's sort of like what happened with Daria. One of the minor characters in Daria is they're trying to spin off. That was a spin-off so movie. So we didn't want to mess that up. We didn't want to like introduce any like Daria stuff and mess that up. But like, uh, we've been sort of avoiding Daria for that reason, and also a lot of the minor characters. trying to be a little bit true to the, our original premise that they went through, that they traveled in time. Yeah. So you notice we haven't seen Todd yet either, but like the idea that in 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 the reboot, um, uh, Daria is now about 40 years old. I and, wonder if uh, Todd would be like 50. Right. And we have, we never like, We've sort of decided it's it's too it's too confusing to show our Beavis and Butthead with old Todd and old like old Stuart or anything. But it, it is also kind of confusing to have Stuart be the same age because then people will be like, "But in the movie, you said they traveled through time. What's going on?" So what the what the way we deal with that is we only see like we've only seen Stuart dealing with old Beavis and Butthead, so Stuart could also be old. We sort of. I was actually going to ask the, uh, a question pertaining to that after that. Well, Mr. Ben Driesen and Tom Anderson have made appearances respectively. All favorites have yet to appear. Uh-huh. Is there yeah, any? Yeah, Ben Driesen is drawn a little bit older, and the idea is like. Tom Anderson doesn't look that different, but now he's like 80. He's aged really well. He's aged, he's aged well. He, he was he was about that old. Um, he looked that old uh, when he was 20. Actually, we're going to do some episodes where, uh, where Tom Anderson is young. Really? We're, yeah, we're going to do um, some very short little segments in, in season 
two episodes uh, called Tom Anderson's War Stories. Every that. Tom Anderson tells a story, he tells stories of when he was, uh, from his days of being a veteran, when he was a veteran of two foreign wars. That's very interesting. That would make for a and great spin off. see him when he's young. It's kind of interesting. And the spoiler I'll give is he wasn't that different. <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, as he'd say. Uh, is there any plans to introduce all, some old characters? Uh, since unlike the last reboot, where it, the, the timeline is acknowledged, are new characters taking their place, like with the Forever World manager? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Mr. Fendrison and Tom Anderson have made appearances, respectively. Old uh -huh. favourites have yet to appear. Is there any plans to introduce all characters? Or since I like the re last reboot, the timeline said, all just our new characters taking their place, like with the Burger World Manager? Uh, Burger World Manager is new, he'll stay. We've seen a little bit of this kid in their class named Cody, who we'll see more of. about it. There's another thing. That was another thing when we started. I, I was very excited about like repopulating the world with a bunch of new characters to sort of freshen up the show. And, and so I really found like the shows are best when they really center on the boys and like taking a moment to establish other characters sort of serve other characters at all it just seems like a bummer I you know, agree like the, just making it like like in the Three Stooges like there were no minor characters in the Three Stooges who you ever cared about and it's like the other shows go to like that but like mostly with rare exception like the guest characters on our show the minor characters on our show are kind of like the minor characters in the Three Stooges where they're just there to sort of Kick the black into the gear. House and then get out of the way. I, so we, we we joke about the show that like writing making music about it is sort of like doing a show, a live action show with actors who are real prima donnas. I have it written like, like three students. If anyone else has it. a funny line, you have to you have to give it to me as a butthead. No one else can have a joke. Uh, no one else can have a close up. Uh, you always have to, uh, if there's any doubt what shot to use, you do a close up of Beavis or Butthead. Or Beavis or butthead. And uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's this thing where, like, if you were working with a prima donna actor, who, uh, two prima donna actors who are absolute nightmares and got really mad if anyone else got a funny joke or, or anyone else was featured in a close up, um, that's what it's like working on our show. That, 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 that a great structure and it's a real love letter to the old days of slapstick comedy like uh, Laurel and Heidi and uh, Three Stooges and Marx Brothers. That's really what we feel like we're doing. It's great to have that type of comedy in this day and age because slapstick comedy never dies. Well, as we've seen in the Oscars. Oh yeah. Still slightly bitter that the Oscar rules are such. We, I, I really wanted us to release to the Beavis and Butthead to the Universe in theaters for Christmas as if we were doing a big Oscar push. I agree. It was originally intended like, for. They changed the rules. You can't do that anymore. It was originally intended for our theaters, but then it got pushed to Paramount Plus. From what I read. What, what's that? 
It was originally intended for Paramount Plus. I mean, it, not Paramount Plus. I mean, theaters, but then it got pushed to Paramount Plus from what I've read. No, it was always meant. Oh, well, uh, the, the, the original script by Ian and Guy, Max and Graham, the whole brothers and very funny writers, um, that was kind of, that was supposed to be a movie. I think at some point they wanted it to be a live action movie and they're actually trying to cast it. Uh, and we, man, we took this, we took the script and rewrote it to make it this, to make it, uh, to launch the series with, but like once when I was involved, it was, it was always just going to be a, a special to start the series. And I think what they really want is like a half hour special or one hour special. And we sort of went above and beyond and wrote an actual movie. I, I think it was even better. I thought it was even better than do America. No problem. I, I like doing America, but I just think Do the Universe was even funnier. One little trivial thing I have noticed is that Beavis and Butthead now say Jesus Christ and Goddamn. With F bombs yeah. with F bombs being ruled out, is this your way of relaxing now you don't have to answer to standards of practices like you did like Well we, yeah, we don't have to answer standards of practices at all. And if we wanted Beavis and Butthead could say anything. Mike Judge but did roll out. We, like, like, it's sort of, the one thing about Beavis and Butthead is, like, it's really important to keep their characters innocent. And, like, it, like, they can't, that's sort of, like, they can't curse. You know, sort of, like, a favor, you know, MTV standards and practices in 1993 did for Beavis and Butthead in sort of forcing them to use all of these made-up expletives. I think sometimes, sometimes like, boundaries like, can... It would, it would not work if Beavis and Butthead could say fuck. I, I think it would, they would not be so charming. There's a bunch of, like, they can't ever hurt anyone. They can't ever want to hurt anyone. They can't curse. They're, they can't ever see porn. I am. It would, it would destroy um, the plan. Like, we have to be very careful that, like, no one is ever feels frightened or seriously bothered by this. But, like, when, when, when Beavis and Butthead, like, say, hey, baby, to, to, like, girls and stuff, it's, like, it's something we're very careful about that, like, to have, like, the reactions always be real. I don't care about this rather than. Yeah, we want them to be completely ineffectual uh, and harmless. Uh, if, they, if they're not harmless, they, if they become very creepy. Butthead, uh, it always makes me laugh when Butthead thinks he's a, he's a ladies' man. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, but I think it's I think sometimes boundaries can create freedom and create a better product depending on what it is. Yeah. The reboot was originally bound for Comedy Central. Is there still plans to air it there? Yes, yes. It, uh, at some point, it will probably air on Comedy Central. Probably when uh, uh, South... Almost certainly. Uh, we have, we, you know, we, we've delivered the ver versions where the ads would go on Comedy Central. Uh, what? What did you say? For a second. Like, we, like, we have to deliver two versions. We deliver the version that's on Paramount Plus and a version that theoretically will be on Comedy Central at some point. So they, they definitely will. Will, th will there be differences? Uh, no, just where the ads go. Probably. Or how many ad breaks there are. And like, the credit, like as, as incredibly short and fast as our credits are now, they'll be even worse. Oh, uh, yeah. And, we uh, have an episode in season two where like some stuff happens over the credits and like in, in, uh, on you know on Comedy Central that won't be allowed. They also they also ordered the Red and Stimpy reboot around the same time. Oh, is that happening? Yeah, it is. Oh, when 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 do we know when it's coming? Next year. Next year. 
And uh, I think, yeah, that Jodie spin-off movie as well. Is it with, is it with Kurt Felician? No, he's not involved. Yeah, it's a entirely new team. I've never met him. I just, I, I will, will know this person. Oh, yeah. uh, last month, the, it was revealed. Uh, oh, yeah. And they're also doing a Jody spin off, Dario. Oh, cool. Hey, that, that was what you were talking about earlier about. Oh, yeah, that's the one, yeah. I, wish I, don't, yeah I, I don't know anything about it. Last month, it was revealed that the movie was a major subscriber driver for Paramount Plus, and the new series trending quite high when the first series was airing. Does this bode well for the franchise's future, and can we expect to see Mark and the Beast in Butthead Universe, or even another movie, or is that too ambitious? Uh, it's far too ambitious vicious, uh, to around the same time next year as the last few episodes. Oh no, it'll be, it'll be spring. It'll be spring. Alright. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll be season three. I, I wish I had that. And hopefully, and hopefully more after that. Yeah, hopefully more after that. A lot of streaming so shows seem to be ending pretty early and I just hope that it's not the same case with Beast of Fire. Well, it's like Thank you for the interview. It was really fun talking to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, is there anything where, else? Where, you, where are you doing this time? Uh, is there anything else you'd like to plug? Oh no, I wish I had more things. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I reside in the UK. <coughs> what time is it there? It's What's twelve a.m. Ha 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 ha.